special molding techniques or special casting techniques which are employed in industries each of this special casting techniques what i am uh, presenting in front of you are uh, exclusively used to create the castings in industries for example there are special casting industries which work on each of any one of this special kind of casting techniques what i am going to what uh, i am explaining you uh, in yesterday's class and even in today's class more particularly in the last class we have discussed about three special uh, molding processes or special casting processes the first one was the shell molding processes and i had told you that shell shell molding processes or shell casting process is basically used to create thin sectioned castings thin sectioned castings then we had discussed the second important type of uh, uh, special molding process called as the investment casting and whenever you want to create some kind of very complex and uh, intricate shaped castings you should go for investment casting techniques then again uh, i had explained you about the continuous casting which is usually or always employed in the steel plants to create or uh, to extrude steel billets steel billets right so these were the three type of special molding techniques what we had discussed in yesterday's class and also i told you that why we are going for the special molding techniques because the normal conventional method of casting is using sand mold and sand mold has some kind of limitations the first important limitation is that a sand the casting which is produced from a sand uh, uh, sand mold will have a very bad surface finish and even the dimensional accuracy will not be as per the requirement the second important limitation is that there will be fixed quantity of castings what you can obtain using a sand mold after that fixed quantity of castings have been achieved the whole sand mold has to be broken down and a new uh, again a sand mold has to be prepared and then the casting has to be done so uh, these are some of the limitations of uh, your uh, sand molding techniques which makes us to go or make use of this special kind of casting techniques like the one like uh, the three things what we had discussed in the yesterday's class so continuing with the discussion today we are going uh, ahead with the next technique of uh, special molding technique called as the gravity casting so again i would like to repeat in the last class we have discussed three important or three uh, special type of casting techniques the first one is shell molding the second one is investment casting and the third one what we have discussed in the last class was continuous casting technique shell molding basically it is being used to create thin shells of castings or thin shelled castings like the uh, top cover of the uh, refrigerator valve uh that kind of components wherein a thin section has to be created there we go for your shell molding technique for other example would be your pins that is present on the uh, on the cylinder of an ic engine those components are being produced out of shell molding technique and i have told that the uh, dam, uh, the thickness will be around 0.6 to 0.8 mm like that then we have seen that the second technique uh, that is investment casting technique it is used to produce kind of uh, jewelries uh, surgical instruments or some kind of complex and intricate shapes whenever we want to create just like the nataraja uh, goddess idol you have to go for investment casting and also the name investment is there because we are uh, uh, shelling out amount of uh, Uh, economy or uh, resources to go for this technique that is investment technique casting technique the third technique what we have discussed was continuous casting technique which is used to create the steel billets in basically in the steel plants so now going ahead with the discussion today's discussion is again about three more special casting techniques that is uh, gravity casting the second one would be or pressure casting pressure die casting or pressure casting and the third one would be centrifugal casting so these are the three more special casting techniques which are used in industries to create castings and we are going to discuss about that so coming to the first one of today's discussion is about gravity casting is called as it's called as gravity casting so gravity casting is also known by one more term called as the permanent casting permanent die molding or permanent casting process okay so what gravity casting is also known by one more word or one more term it is permanent casting or permanent mold casting the reason behind this is that in case of your gravity casting we make use of metallic molds the molds in which the metal is being poured that mold is made up of metal and since metal is permanent the name for this type of technique is also permanent mold casting or permanent die casting okay so that is the first thing what i have written on the board that uh, gravity casting is also known as the permanent mold casting because 
here the mold is being made up of the mold in which you pour the metal that mold is made up of metal till now we have seen that the mold would be made up of uh, many a times or mostly it would be made up of sand but here it's a special situation wherein we have made or we make use of metallic molds to uh, produce the castings so that's why it's called as permanent mold castings or permanent mold casting process and here uh, the molten metal what is being poured inside the metallic mold is under the influence of gravity that means it is free pouring of metal being done from a height and under the influence of gravity is it's made to f enter into the mold cavity hence because of this uh, reason this type of casting process is also called as gravity die casting because the metal is flowing and filling inside the mold cavity because or under the influence of gravity under the influence of gravity okay so that is the reason why this uh, uh, casting technique is also called as gravity casting or gravity die casting or permanent die casting also why the term permanent because we make use of metallic molds over here and why it is called as gravity because we make use of or we take the help of the influence of gravity for the metal to flow and fill into the mold cavity okay so with this basis basics we will go ahead with the process or how this gravity casting is being done here i have put an image of the gravity casting technique uh, the mold the metallic mold will be in two halves it will be just like a book opened in front of you an open book which is kept in front of you just like that you can imagine and it will be having two halves one half and the second half just like this one the first one is called as the uh, first half and the second one is over here second half both can be closed together and clamped with the help of this pin so you can see that there is a clamp over here you rotate it and then the clamping will be done just so just like this you will open it and whenever you want you can close down like this okay so the metallic mold which you use here are made up of two halves like this then the gates and the risers are being machined inside or on the mold itself so you can see that the gates and the risers the gates and the risers and all are being machined out in the metallic mold only then what we do is that here the metallic mold is first of all cleaned with the help of some kind of wire brush or any other source so that any kind of remnants from the previous processes are not been there so we make use of wire brush or some kind of blow uh, compressed air and see that nothing is being left inside then what we do is that we apply some kind of lubricant on the inner surface of the mold cavity why do we apply this lubricant the reason for applying the lubricants are two one is that it will increase the life of the mold the metallic molds life has to be increased and the second one is that the removal of the final casting becomes easier so if you apply the uh, uh, lubricant inside the surface of this uh, mold cavity here you will see that the easy removal of the casting can be done at the end stage so for that reason we make use of the lubricant okay and after that what we do is that we preheat this mold cavity for certain duration of uh, for certain temperature around 200 to 300 degrees celsius we heat the mold cavity why do we heat the mold cavity so that when we are pouring the metal there should not be an enormous temperature gradient between the metal metal temperature and the mold temperature if there is a uh, enormous temperature difference there will be a difference there will be a thermal gradient because of which a shock can be introduced or internal stresses can develop inside the solidifying casting so for that reason to in order to decrease the temperature gradient between the metal which is flowing and the metallic mold the metallic mold is preheated for to around 200 to 300 degree celsius after that what we do is that we clamp this both halves of the metallic mold and then we pour the metal from the uh, riser uh, from the pouring basin what is being provided it is allowed or the metal what you pour is being allowed to solidify inside for certain duration of time and then you open up this uh, two halves of the mold and you get the casting like this here you should remember that the metal is being poured inside under the influence of gravity there is no external aid or no pressurized way by which you are pouring the metal so for that reason this technique is called as the gravity casting because you are pouring the metal under the influence of gravity and the metal is being filling inside the mold also by the uh, gravity influence only there is no external uh, source of pressure being applied to make the metal fill into the mold or something like that okay so this is the process of gravity casting okay so what is the advantage of this technique the advantage of uh, making use of this gravity casting or permanent mold casting is that uh, 
is that here we are making use of metallic molds and since metallic molds internal surface and all surface finish will be very good the same surface finish will be reflected on the casting or the final casting what you are getting so now you can compare a sand casting with a metallic casting in terms of or in case of your sand casting the casting what you are producing uh, will have the imprint of the small small grains of the sand particle or in other words a sand casting product will have a ba bad surface finish but in the case of your metallic casting since the metal is very smooth enough the final casting what you obtain out of this technique will be also very good surface finish plus you will be having a better dimensional accuracy obtained in this case of uh, metal casting that is metallic casting not only that other advantages are that here you can produce n number of n quantities n number of quantities of the castings as compared to your sand technique sand casting technique i have already explained you if you are having or doing this uh, casting process by sand uh, technique there will be fixed number of uh, castings what you can produce but in the case of metallic castings or metallic uh, mold castings you can produce around n number of castings without being required to replace the metallic mold okay however there will be a definite life for the metallic mold also however compared to the sand casting technique the life of the metallic mold will be very high okay so these are the advantages of uh, your uh, the metallic mold or permanent mold or uh, in other words gravity die casting technique gravity die casting technique okay so uh, i what i have explained is in the on the board the same thing we will read in the form of lines or in the form of sentences the mold is made up of cast iron tool steel graphite copper or aluminum alloys depending upon the metal being cast so this mold what you are having this mold can be made up of zinc it can be made up of graphite it can be made up of steel it can be made up of copper or aluminum the metal which you material which you make use will depend or which will depend upon what type of metal casting you are producing so based upon that you have to choose the type of metal for your metallic mold the gates and risers are machined inside the mold itself so you can see here the uh, risers the gating system the pouring basin and all will be machined inside the metallic block only then the mold represents an open book it will be just like an open book so that is the example i would like to place in front of you that this metallic uh, mold is just like an open book like this right and then the mold is first cleaned with a wire brush or compressed air to remove the dust and other particles so what happens is that you regularly make use of the metallic molds so some kind of remnants in the form of burrs so in the form of sand particles or in the form of small small chips and burrs would remain from the previous castings what you have produced so that might affect your further uh, castings what you are producing so in order to remove that we make use of a wire brush and clean the internal surface of the mold or otherwise you make use of compressed air and remove the internal whatever the small bits and bursts are present then the mold is preheated to 200 to 280 degree celsius why you heat the mold to 200 to 280 degree celsius after that there should not be a enormous temperature difference between the pouring metal and the temperature of the metallic mold if that temperature difference is very high then it will result in the development of kind of internal stresses inside the casting so for that reason we uh, uh, minimize the temperature difference between the pouring metal and the metallic mold so the metallic mold is preheated to something around 200 or 280 degree celsius inside the surface is sprayed with a lubricant i have told you that why we put lubricant inside the uh, mold so uh, there are two reasons you apply the lubricant inside the mold for two reasons one is that it will increase the life of the die and second one the removal of the casting becomes easier at the end at the end so for that reason we apply the lubricant the mold is now closed and the metal is poured under the gravity so now what we do is that the opened uh, this one uh, mold cavity is been closed and then we pour the metal from the top then and it is under gravity that's why i have marked this line that is under gravity after solidification the mold is opened and castings are removed after that after the solidification process we allow the metal to solidify after that we again open that uh, uh, metallic mold and the casting is being removed that casting is being removed and the uh, risers and the gating systems what you had provided will be chipped off and you will get the final casting out of it final casting out of it so these are the uh, this is the process what i had explained to you uh, about the gravity casting technique now uh, advantages of this process is no sand preparation is required so you can see that in this case of your uh, permanent mold uh, casting technique there is no sand preparation at all so no need of 
having a huge setup of uh, green sand adding clay clay material into it additives then molding it giving it a shape creating a cavity creating the cope and the drag part all those things are just eliminated out by using this one single metallic mold however you should remember that making of metallic mold is not that easy it will cost you and it will take in amount of time to get a final uh, metallic mold also so uh, it will add up to your cost however the preparation as uh, is required in the sand casting process wouldn't be there in this case okay that is the first advantage the second advantage as i said that you will get a very good surface finish and good dimensional accuracy in this case and mass production is possible the third important point that mass production is possible so you can imagine that you are having a metallic mold and uh, you can just go on pouring the metal and uh, remove the castings out of it so around 10000 15000 20000 castings can be removed out of a single metallic mold but the same scenario you imagine with the sand molding or sand casting technique after some n number of 10 or 20 castings probably you will have to break that sand mold and then use a new sand mold to produce the castings so the mass productions are possible in this case that is the gravity casting then it occupies less space so you have a metallic mold you keep it in one place of your lab or of your industrial setup and that's over but in the case of sand casting you will have to have a big setup and do all the processes so this process will require less amount of space and the mechanical properties can be controlled more easily compared to sand castings in the case of sand castings what happens is that the when the metal is being poured inside slowly the heat is uh, uh, eliminated out of that metal and it gets extracted out into the environment and the sand particles are of course uh, insulators they don't allow the heat to pass through it and that in fact determines the properties of the metal casting what you are getting the way the manner in which you cool the metal but in the case of metal casting what happens is that since the metal uh, is there it's a good conductor of heat the heat gets liberated out very easily uh, out from the casting and because of which it said to be that you can easily maintain the properties of or the mechanical properties of the casting what you are getting you can uh, in fact play upon with the metallic mold and get the properties what you are requiring into so just in general the uh, maintaining of the mechanical properties is more better in the case of your metallic molds so this is the advantages of your sand uh, gravity casting while some there are some drawbacks or limitations also the limitations are like this cost of making the die is very high so uh, you see the cost uh, the uh, cost is very high uh, making of the metallic mold will require enormous amount of uh, amount to be put because you are making use of a metal of special grade to make that metallic mold so cost will be involved in it then costly for small quantity of production for example if you want to make small quantity of production for example i will take you tell you the example of a uh, some kind of uh, medical implants you are making a small medical implant and that medical implant will go into a particular uh, particular patient it will not be used by n number of patients because each of the patients will have his own dimensions so in that case you have to make a metallic mold only for making of 6 or 7 or 8 castings suppose so in that case this process becomes very very much costly that means for making of only just 6 to 8 castings you have to prepare a metallic mold and for that reason you have to invest a lot and the returns what you will be getting will be very much less so this is the that is the meaning of this so for the customized productions you shouldn't go for metallic molds okay so that is the meaning of this then uh, since metal is poured in an open atmosphere oxidation can happen this is one of the important limitation of our gravity die casting or permanent die casting here we are pouring the metal into the metallic mold in an open atmosphere from air so when we are pouring chances are there that the metal can get oxidized and that can deteriorate its properties in the later stage so this is one limitation which can we can see in the case of our permanent mold casting or di, uh, gravity die casting now coming to the applications i would like to give you an assignment that you try to search what are the uh, applications of this type of casting technique what i have just discussed that is gravity die casting try to find out what are the applications of this uh, gravity die casting some of the components you can Uh, sir it on the net you on the net you can just write applications of gravity die casting or permanent die casting and you will get a series of images and then you can understand where and all this type of technique is used to make the castings so uh, the next one is 
uh, uh, we have known now what is gravity die casting we have seen the process we have learned about the process how it is being done then we have seen its advantages limitations or drawbacks and then we have also seen the applications i i hope you will try to find out the applications in the net now we have to see what are the precautions we have to take when we are designing the metallic molds or the gravity die casting molds so some kind of precautions we have to take what can be the precautions what we have to do that's written on the uh, slide see the first thing is that uh, we should design the mold cavity in such a manner that there are minimum to minimum amount of undercuts present because we are pouring the metal with the help of gravity we expect that with the help of gravity the metal metal should fill inside the uh, mold uh, cavity we don't expect that there should be any undercuts present if there are undercuts present inside the mold cavity the filling of the metallic metal becomes a little bit difficult so in the case of our uh, gravity die casting or permanent die casting it is to be seen that the mold cavity shouldn't have the undercuts and if it is there try to minimize it try to minimize it so that's written on the first uh, point the mold cavity should be simple without any undercuts so that the ejection becomes easier yes one more uh, reason why the undercuts should be minimum is that the ejection or the removal of the final casting becomes easier if undercuts are low in number the design should be such that progressive solidification happens towards the risers so this is you have learned from the design of castings that always the Uh, casting should solid solidify from the core region to the riser region that is uh, you know that correct so shorinoff's rules are uh, rule is that that which you had dis which sir might have discussed right so it is always seen that the first component in the casting what has to solidify is the core and the last part what has to solidify should be the riser part so the same concept should be seen or uh, employed here also you have to see that you design the mold casting in such a mold uh, cavity in such a manner that the progressive solidification should happen that is from the core and then it should solidify through towards the riser part so that is the second important thing what you should consider while designing the mold cavity then since the die is is, uh, is used continuously large amount of heat is absorbed and hence a provision for heat dissipation should also be there so you know that you are making use of a metallic mold and metallic molds are good conductor in heat it will extract the heat out of that metallic metal what you have poured inside and it is to be seen that the heat from the metallic mold has to be dissipated out and that is the reason why it is being covered up by a water jacket in many of the cases for example uh, i would like to bring in front of you uh, yesterday's example of continuous casting process just look here so here it is there you can see this this is also a metallic mold being used over here open metallic mold it is made up of copper i had explained to you in the last class and you can see opening what is been given it is for water coolant so the water should is expected to flow out of here so that the metallic mold gets cooled up when the process is going on so this way kind of thing you can uh, provide uh, in the case of your permanent die casting or uh, gravity die casting also if i want to show you how does this uh, permanent uh, mold cavity looks like it is like this so you can see this one yes so you can see this one this is an example for your metallic mold so you can see this uh, up left half and the right half portion of the metal metallic mold is there and you inject inside the uh, melt uh, this one what uh, uh, wax into it and get the casting so of course this here we don't make use of the gravity pressure might be used however this what you can see is an example of permanent mold permanent mold metallic mold so with this example we can just go ahead yes so here it is so uh, if you are making use of the metallic mold or permanent mold wherein you have the metal uh, mold being made up of metal then you should provide some kind of cooling uh, 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 enclosure or cooling facility so that the heat gets dissipated out of the mold cavity that's an option you want if you want you can provide it or many times you can even leave it without that also you can get the casting produced okay so this is the explanation about our uh, uh, you know the gravity die casting and here this some of the images of the casting of uh, uh, the products which are produced out of the gravity casting so you can see this one is the first one you can see that uh, these are all the top portions as well as this one and the other one side things are a waste they have to be removed out or trimmed off from the uh, component to get the final casting so these are all the extra things 1 2 3 4 5 those are the risers 
while those might be the ingates uh, or the uh, pouring basin the sprue uh, all those things would be there ingates and all so the final casting is only the bottom this one and these are some of the components which are made out of gravity die casting components so these are some of the ca casting components uh, uh, produced for example this might be the block of the engine uh, engine block of a vehicle all these things are being produced out of this gravity die casting only gravity die casting components so this completes our uh, uh, discussion about the fourth important or special type of molding uh, technique called as the gravity die casting to remember you should uh, remember that this technique makes use of the metallic molds for getting the casting right okay and uh, it's also called as permanent mold also it's also called as permanent die casting the next technique what we are going to discuss in today's class is called as a pressure die casting now this pressure die casting is just an improvement to the previous one that is the gravity die casting the difference between the gravity die casting and pressure die casting is very simple in the case of gravity die casting how you inject the metal or how you introduce the metal inside the mold cavity it is through gravity but here in the case of pressure die casting you introduce the metal inside the mold cavity with the help of some kind of pressure with the help of some kind of pressure only that is the difference between the previous one and the this current one what we are discussing so here it's written that it is similar to permanent mold casting as i explained this technique is very similar to your permanent mold casting same thing only here the metal is injected at high pressure what is that high pressure the high pressure may be around 10 mega pascal to 210 mega pascal it's very huge mega uh, pressure okay so the pressure at which the metal can be uh, injected inside the mold cavity will be from uh, 10 mega pascal to 210 mega pascal and because of this why we are interested in interested in injecting the metal at high pressure the reason behind is that there are some kind of undercuts or thin sections or some kind of portions inside the mold cavity which doesn't get spilled up if you make use of the gravity or other technique so if you want that portion of the mold cavity also to be filled up with metal then you should introduce some kind of pressure and make the mold uh, metal to enter into those regions so for that reason we make use of some pressure die casting technique okay so uh, for example i would like to directly go into the components so for example if you want to produce uh, if you want to introduce the metal in this region so it is very difficult many a times that the metal will not flow into this small regions so for that reason what we do is that we introduce the metal with the help of some kind of pressure that's why it is called as pressure die casting process here the metal is being introduced into this one and it goes up till here because there is a pressure been acting on the metal from behind it will pressurize the metal and get, uh, make it to enter all the undercuts and thin sections right so that's what because of this any nor narrow sections complex shapes and fine surfaces details are easily obtained so this is the reason why we make use of uh, this type of technique called as a pressure die casting okay so coming to the uh, process how this uh, uh, casting technique is being done so here you see this this is the pressure die casting mold again it will also be made up of two halves the this part is called as the moving half the mold will be made up of two halves this part is called as the moving half and this part is called as the stationary part half stationary half moving half and stationary half as the name implies or gives you a meaning that this can move in this direction while this is been constant it will remain at its own position so while these are nothing but the ejector pins one two these are the ejector pins what are the what is the use of ejector pin at the end of the casting when this moves out in this fashion this will push this casting outside so that's the reason it's called as the ejector pins one and two and then what we do is that here there is a cylinder into which we introduce the metal and there will be a plunger like this this plunger will push this metal here and because of the pressure the metal will enter into this region and fill the mold cavity like this it will enter into the mold cavity even this region it will get filled up with the mold uh, with the metal and then what we do is that after uh, the metal has been properly introduced into the mold cavity we allow it to solidify for certain duration time in, under the pressurized condition only under the pressurized condition only you allow this to get solidified after that what happen, what is being done is that once the solidification is being done then what we do is that this moving half of the mold cave mold is being removed out like this and then with the help of ejector pin this casting water obtained will be pushed out and you will get the casting plus some things like this or some things like this which can be properly uh, later removed by trimming okay so this is the technique 
what's being done in the case of pressure die casting i'll explain you uh, or uh, the same explanation has been given in the form of words the die consists of two parts the stationary half which is fixed and moving half or the ejector die so this is the moving half while this is the stationary half the die will be mold will be made up of two parts first the two parts are apart lubricant is sprayed inside the die cavity so first initially what is been seen is that both the halves are separated both are at the beginning of the cycle both will be separated out and then what we do is that we spray some kind of lubricant inside why we are spraying lubricant again that two reasons are there one reason is that it will increase the life of the die and second one is that the easy removal of the casting happens at the end stage so that is the reason why we may we make use of the lubricant then um, the two halves are closed and clamped then once we apply the lubricant the both the uh, uh, mold halves are closed and clamped and the required amount of metal is injected into the die it is injected from bottom after solidification under pressure the die is opened and casting is ejected so after you uh, uh, think that the solidification has been done after that the uh, moving or the ejector die is being removed out with the help of ejector pins the casting is removed out and given to the uh, is being processed further here what you should note is that here you can see that here you are introducing the metal against the gravity here you are introducing the metal against the gravity while in the earlier cases and all you are seeing that you are seeing that the metal was introduced under the influence of gravity but here you are acting without or against the nature of uh, gravity and introducing the metal in the upward direction by usage of this pressure so that's why it is called as pressure die casting okay now there are again two types of divisions in uh, our pressure die casting one is hot chamber pressure die casting and the other one is cold chamber pressure die casting there are again two types of or subdivisions under this so we'll go ahead with that hot chamber die casting and cold chamber die casting so when it comes to your hot chamber die casting uh, before that the difference between this hot chamber and cold chamber is very simple sim uh, very simple in the case of your hot chamber die casting the metal uh, is being in a hot condition and then it is being put into the uh, uh, inside the mold cavity or in other words what you can say is that the furnace wherein you are uh, melting the metal is a part of the machine is a part of this uh, uh, pressure die casting machine and if it is not a part of the pressure die casting then it is called as cold chamber pressure die casting so only the difference between this hot chamber pressure die casting and cold chamber pressure die casting is like this in the case of hot chamber die casting the place or the uh, furnace wherein you melt the metal is a part of the machinery that is the pressure die casting machinery and if that is not a part of your uh, pressure die casting machinery then it is called as cold chamber pressure die casting okay so this is only the difference i'll explain you more in detail this figure what you can see over here is hot chamber pressure die casting so you can see here here the metal is being melted and it is a part of this machine only wherein the casting is also prepared so for that reason it is called as hot chamber pressure die casting what we do here is that we make use of a goose neck like this this portion what you can see you no know, it's called as the goose neck it's called as a goose neck and on that goose neck there will be a plunger there will be a plunger that plunger can move up and down so at the beginning of the cycle what happens is that uh, the melt the uh, metal is being melt the uh, for whichever metal you want to uh, carry out this type of casting you have to melt it in this furnace and then what we do is that uh the plunger is being raised up so because of raising up a kind of suction pressure is created and the inlet port over here opens up the metal enters into this the metal enters into this then the next work is to plunge that uh plunger down so because of which the metal what was entered here will enter into the uh, mold cavity under pressure so it will enter the mold cavity under pressure and it fills the mold cavity once uh, it fills up the mold cavity what you have to do is that you have keep you have to keep the plunger in the plunged condition only and allow the metal to solidify inside the mold cavity once solidification is being done then what we do is that the second half that is the uh, ejector part of the die mold cavity is being removed out and you will get the final casting final casting so here also the things remain the same Uh, that you are introducing the metal under gravity uh, uh, without uh, gravity that is under pressure and second thing is that the mold cavity will be made up of two halves one is stationary and the other one is moving that is common only the difference over here is that you are uh, having the furnace wherein mean 
wherein you are melting the metal as a part of the machine only. It is a part of the machine only, that is the difference. The same thing is being introduced in the form of cycle like this. At the beginning of the cycle, you will see that, beginning of the cycle, you will see that this both moving as well as the stationary part of your die are in contact while the plunger is little bit down. So what we do is that we raise that plunger. So because of which what happens is that the metal is being sucked from the furnace and moves into to the goose neck. This is called as the goose neck. So it uh, moves into it. And then when we plunge the uh, plunger in down, what we see is that the metal enters into the mold cavity here. This is the core. Uh, this is structure is being put for the sake of core. So it fills into the mold cavity. It is allowed to solidify. Once this is being done, solidification is being done, the uh, ejector part or the moving part of the die is removed out and you will get the casting like this with the core, hollow sectioned core. And what you will do is that uh, you can remove out and you get the casting and then again the plunger comes back to its first position which was there at the uh, beginning of the cycle, at the beginning of the cycle. So you will get the casting like this, casting like this. So this technique is called as the hot chamber pressure die casting. It's called as hot chamber pressure die casting. And basically this type of hot chamber die casting is being utilized uh, for metals like zinc, magnesium or the one which is having low melting point temperatures for only those cells we make use of this kind of technique that is hot uh, chamber pressure casting technique. Uh, while in the case of uh, metal like aluminium and steel this is not preferred because uh, uh, it becomes really difficult for making or maintaining the uh, procedure. Yes. Okay. So for that reason, it's not being used for uh, high temperature metals. So I've written this thing over here only to be used for low melting temperature alloys like lead, zinc and tin. Never to be used for aluminum alloys. Why? Because aluminum alloys will stick to this goose neck and it will affect the working or the procedure or the working of the setup. So that's why it is not used. Well, in the next, uh, the same things what I've explained you is in the form of words. We'll just go ahead with that. In hot chamber process, a goose neck is used in pumping the liquid metal into the die cavity. The goose neck is submerged into the submerged uh, into the submerged into the furnace uh, holding the metal. The plunger moves up to uncover the entry port of the entry for the entry of the liquid metal into the goose neck. That means at the beginning of the cycle, the plunger is moved up. So because of that, the entry port becomes open or opens up and the metal gets sucked inside. The plunger is plunged forcing the metal into the die cavity. The plunger is moved down because of which the metal which was just sucked up will move into the through the gooseneck and enter into the die cavity. The operating cycle is explained in the next image. The next set of images A, B, C, D just I, what I had explained over here. This is the cycle. Here what you can see is that the cycle starts with the plunger at the highest end and the, and the closing of the die. So at the beginning of the cycle you will see that the plunger is at the topmost uh, height and the while at the side the both the dies are closed the metal is injected the metal is solidified at that pressure only and the die is open to get the casting so at that pressurized uh, atmosphere only the uh, metal is being allowed to solidify inside the uh, die and once solidification is being completed both the moving and the stationary part of the mold is being removed out and you get the casting out so this is nothing but our uh, hot chamber uh, molding process okay I hope uh, you have understood uh, the pressure die casting process and in that hot chamber pressure die casting process or hot chamber casting process. Okay, so pressure die casting process is very simple compared to the previous one. Here we make use of pressure to introduce the metal inside the die cavity or permanent die cavity or the uh, metallic mold. And second is that in case of your hot chamber die casting, the furnace will be a part of our machinery wherein we melt the metal. Only that is, is the important thing what you should remember. Then the next part or subdivision of our uh, pressure die casting is our cold chamber die casting technique. Cold chamber die casting technique. Here what we see is that the furnace wherein we are melting the metal is not a part of the machinery. So in case if you are trying to set up a uh, hot chamber pressure die casting technique, then uh, you will have to have a machinery. It is expected that you should have machinery along with the furnace where you are melting the metal. While in the case of cold chamber pressure die casting technique, it is not like that. You have a machinery which will comprise of only just the moving and the stationary part of the mold while the melting of the metal has to be done somewhere else and it has to be brought separately, independently and put it into the setup. So this is the, 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 that technique, cold chamber pressure die casting technique. So you can see that uh, that ladle what you can see there that is the that is the uh, kind of uh, a vessel from 
through which we bring that metallic metal from the furnace and pour into this region and you can see that there is a plunger at the back behind and this is the mold cavity that is a stationary part and the ejector part so from the ladle the metal is being poured here completely then the plunger is being pushed inside figure b you can see then what we do is that once the solidification is being done then this moving part of the die is removed out while stationary part will remain the same and this one is being removed out with the help of these two ejector pins it is being removed out and you get the final casting like this at the same time the plunger will move back to its original position so it becomes just like your cycle or the first uh, step of the cycle and then you will get the final casting like this okay so this is how it's being done now this one is being provided for creating a hollow section in the casting that is the core so this is nothing but the core so this explains your cold chamber pressure die casting so the same thing is been written in the form of uh, sentences in cold chamber the molten metal is poured using a ladle so that part is called as a ladle wherein you are pouring the metal this part this is called as a ladle the cycle is as shown above the molten metal is put into the cavity using a plunger so uh, a plunger is being used this is called as a plunger this you can see my mouse this is the plunger so this metal what you pour inside using a ladle is being put inside this cavity with the help of this plunger the metal is solidified and then ejected to get the casting so later the metal is allowed to solidify over here and that is being removed out uh, with the help of this ejector pins at the same time the plunger will come back to its original position you can see the direction of arrow it is coming back to its original position like this so that the next cycle continues this is our cold chamber pressure die casting so what are the advantages of this uh, uh, pressure die casting what are the advantages you can all think over it and tell me oh, again it is there on the slide also but you can say that in the case of our sand casting technique the main problem was that the castings what we were getting out of sand casting technique were, were very bad surface finished or were not good in dimensional accuracy that was overcome by using of our metallic molds or permanent mold which is also called as gravity die casting in the case of gravity die casting the problem associated was that undercuts and all were not been able to fill up with the uh, uh, under the influence of gravity that was the limitation of our gravity die casting so to overcome that limitation we are having the next modification of the casting technique called as the pressure die casting so here what we do we are injecting the metal with the help of pressure because of which all the undercuts and the regions which are very difficult to get filled up with uh, with the metal get easily filled up because there is a pressure behind right so that is the advantage of this technique so that's what is written written very small thicknesses can be achieved since high pressure is used uh, very high production rates around 200 uh, pieces per hour so another advantage is here is that you can produce mass number of products here i have written 200 pieces per hour so in one hour 200 number of components can be produced out of this technique that is the uh, pressure die casting technique this is a very huge advantage of this technique right then good surface finish good dimensional accuracy and life of the die is also good so life of the die is also very good as uh, compared i mean uh, in this process so these are the some of the advantages the basic advantage is that the undercuts the thin sections where the metal is very difficult to get in are easily filled up by using this technique while uh, the limitations are that machines are expensive so if you want to set up a pressure die casting technique uh, pressure die casting uh, setup you have to buy machineries you should have a kind of complex structure uh, wherein there is a uh, fixed stationary mold uh, ejector mold then there should be a furnace there should be a some way by which you transfer the metal from the furnace to this mold and then there should be ejector pins all those things will add up to your cost so this kind of setup is little bit costly and uh, air gets trapped inside the die leading to defects one more disadvantage what you can say is that here uh, when you are filling that metal using a pressure sometimes air will be there inside the die cavity and that air becomes a part of the final casting also sometimes so this is one of the uh, limitation of this technique so this is the second important technique what we have discussed today uh, that is our Uh, pressure die casting technique okay so this is what we have completed now that is pressure die casting technique now coming to the last technique what we are going to learn today is called as the centrifugal casting technique that is called as the centrifugal casting technique so before i go ahead uh, i know that i presume that you know what is the meaning of centrifugal force so if you have uh, a ball and uh, tied up to a string and try to rotate it you will see that the ball will move at the 
extreme end of the thread and try to come out of the thread and go away. So that kind of centrifugal force uh, is being created because of which that ball uh, moves at the outer circumference, right? So like that, you can imagine that. So that is called as a centrifugal force. So this centrifugal force, in other words, is a type of force which is created away from the center, away from the center. And the centrifugal uh, uh, force is being put into use in many of the engineering applications and even in the medical applications also if you see. Uh, many of the places in engineering applications require for suppression of or segregation of uh, impurities from the main product. For that we make use of centrifugal force because of the density difference both the things separate out and you can remove it out and use it. Similarly in the case of medical uh, applications also the blood is been given uh, centrifugal action or centrifugal force to separate out the WBC and white BCC from the blood and then the counts are being calculated or counted and the diseases are being defect, uh, detected. So like that the centrifugal force is being put into a real -time application in n number of situations. Similarly the centrifugal uh, concept of force is also used in our uh, casting technique and it's called as centrifugal casting. So with this basics we'll go ahead with the process. So, in simple terms, the process includes rotating the mold rapidly about its axis. So, uh, in very simple terms, if I want to explain you what is this centrifugal casting, it is very simple. You take the mold and rotate it at a very high speed. So, that is nothing but centrifugal casting. So, rotation is being attached or associated with this type of molding process. So, in simple terms, the process includes rotating the mold rapidly about its axis, about its central axis. You rotate that mold at a very fast speed. Because of this, a centrifugal force is created, putting a continuous pressure on the metal as it solidifies. So because of this centrifugal force, what happens is that metal is being put into a pressure by which it fills up the complete uh, section of the mold cavity. The slag, oxides and impurities being lighter, segregates and uh, moves towards the center. So since the slag, impurities and all are lighter than the metal, it will segregate or come and get collected at the central portion of the mold cavity. There are Again, there are three types into this. Uh, this is just the explanation of our uh, centrifugal casting. You should remember that centrifugal casting involves high rotation of the mold. So because of which the metal gets filled up or metal fills up the mold cavity, the uh, slag, impurities and all goes and collects at the central post of the mold. So this is the uh, understanding behind this type of technique. And there are basically three types of subdivisions again in this type of casting called as a centrifugal casting. So the first one is uh, uh, true centrifugal casting. In the case of true centrifugal casting, what we see is that uh, it is used to basically, first of all, you should understand that this type of uh, centrifugal casting technique, that is true centrifugal casting, is used to produce kinds of hollow tubes and pipes. Uh, you might have seen the barrel of a gun, a gun. So that uh, machine gun or a gun, that gun's barrel is being made out of this technique only called as the true centrifugal casting technique only. So here what we do is that, here uh, there is a mold, so this is the mold, this is the mold and uh, what we see is that uh, we put the molten, molten metal through this orifice over here, over, over here and then there will be rollers, 1, 2, 3 and 4 rollers will be there, they will be coupled up to a motor, the motor will rotate these rollers because of which what happens is that this whole cavity or this mold cavity will rotate. And because of this rotation, what will happen is that the metal will go and collect in these regions, in these regions only at the periphery, only at the periphery. So at the end, at final, uh, the casting would be something like a, like a hollow pipe or a tube like thing. I have a video to support what I'm explaining that I will like, show you a bit later. So this is called as the two centrifugal casting. So here what happens is that the metal is being poured through this. This is the mold cavity. The metal comes and collects over here over here or probably the complete one then it is being rotated about its axis only it is being rotated like this so what happens is that because of the centrifugal force the metal gets collected at the uh, tip of this mold cavity and a hollow tube is being produced out of this technique the same thing is being written in the form of words used for making hollow pipes tubes etc the axis of rotation above a rotation can be vertical or horizontal here in this case the axis of the rotation is horizontal it can be vertical also then uh, uh, only axis symmetrical, what is this axis symmetrical means only those components which are symmetrical about its axis can be produced out of this technique and one more requirement is that only those castings which require a hollow inside it 
should be made use or should be produced out of this casting. So for producing castings out of this technique, you should have two requirements. One is the final component is axis uh, symmetrical about its axis. And second one is that it should have some kind of hollowness inside, a hollow comp part inside. Okay, so only axis, axis symmetrical uh, uh, objects are and having central holes are suitable for this technique. And experiment, uh, this uh, equipment is expensive and the sum of the components which are made out of this technique can be your gun barrels, tubes, pipes, etc. Okay, so this is the technique which is called as true centrifugal casting. The next type of centrifugal casting is called as a semi-centrifugal casting technique, semi-centrifugal casting technique. It is very similar to your uh, earlier one that is the true centrifugal casting process. Only the difference is that here uh, no, don't require any hole. And if you require a hole, you can place a core inside. Here in this particular diagram what we have shown, there is a core inside. So this core will create a hollow, but otherwise there is no requirement that a hollowed casting you are expecting to produce. You can can produce a filled casting also and second is that requirement is that it should be uh, axis symmetrical that is along the axis it should be symmetrical that is a requirement which should be there over here so here you can see the metal is being poured in this way here the metal is being poured and then what we do is that along this axis it is being rotated it is being rotated about its axis so because of this the metal gets filled up in all the cuts and undercuts of the mold cavity and you get the final casting so that is that so used when more complicated jobs are there and jobs needs to be axis symmetrical. However, central hole may not be present here. So this is the uh, semi-centrifugal -sem casting. The third last part of our uh, centrifugal casting is again on the centrifugal casting. The name is centrifugal casting. So here what we see is that uh, here in this case, we do not need or we do not need that we have to produce uh, axis symmetrical parts only. That means the parts should be symmetrical about axis. There is not a requirement for that in this case. Also, there is no requirement of any central holes also. Student may or may not be present. So here what we do is that n number of small components are being produced out of this technique. So if you can see the top, you can see this one, two, three, four, and five parts. The mold cavity are present and metal is being put inside and it is being rotated at a very 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 high speed about its axis. It is being rotated at a very very high speed about its axis because of which the metal gets filled up and you will get n number of small 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 quantities, small 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 products. That is centrifugal casting. So here this is used when the jobs are not axis symmetry or symmetrical. The jobs are of very small shape and the jobs are uniformly placed on the table about the periphery. So what we do is that jobs are uniformly placed about its periphery and metal is put uh, and rotated to get the casting. So here the metal is being put and again you will get the final casting and number of castings produced by this technique. This technique is called as centrifugal casting. It is a subdivision of centrifugal casting. Centrifugal casting there are three types. One is our uh, uh, true centrifugal casting which is used to produce uh, hollow tubes and pipes. There the requirement is that the component should be axis symmetrical plus hollowed component should be produced. The second one is semi-centrifugal casting process wherein there is no requirement that the casting should have a central hole. Okay, however, axis symmetry should be there. And the third technique is centrifugal casting. Here, we don't expect that the final casting should have a symmetrical requirement or uh, even a hole in place. So, this is the third type of centrifugal casting technique. So, this completes your all the special type of casting processes. So, to... Uh, put it in very simple words like it's like this special molding or casting processes the first one is shell molding process it is also called as corning process in the last class we have seen and it is basically used to make very thin section components the second one is investment molding or investment casting it is also called as lost wax technique and it is basically used to create very complex intricate shapes the third technique is gravity die casting it is also called as permanent die casting and it is used to get a component which is of very good surface finish Centrifugal casting, the fourth one, uh, here we are basically interested in to get symmetrical objects. About an axis, if you want symmetrical objects, you should go for this type of casting technique. Continuous casting is used basically for making of steel billets in steel and iron plants. And then pressure die casting is used to create thin undercuts, wherein the metal is very difficult to go and fill in. There you make use of pressure and make the metal to get inside those undercuts and fill up and then you get the casting. So. These are the six type of special casting techniques what we have learned. So now uh, what we will do is that what we will do is that 
uh, yeah uh, we have some nine minutes of time so we will see one or two videos okay yes yeah so here i'll show you how this uh, gravity die casting looks like so here you can see this is the aluminum metal which is being poured inside this is called as the gravity die casting so you can see here the metal is being poured inside with the help of under gravity so clamping was being done now you can see the two halves of the mold just i said it is just like an open book so both are being opened up so here these are the gatings and these are the castings you can see this correct so as i said that the gatings and the risers are a part of the casting in this technique it is being to be removed later and finally you will get the casting so here this is the the final casting and this is the final casting you can see you can see the surface finish and uh, dimensional accuracy what you wanted you have got it okay so this is our pressure die casting then i'll show you hot chamber die casting process so here you can see this is our uh, hot chamber die casting process so you can see here the furnace is here only the way place where when we are melting it so like this so this is the moving die the fixed die and then there is a ejector plate assembly here furnace is here so here you are melting the metal closing the die the cycle is yet to begin so now it starts so you can see this is the goose neck this is called as the goose neck the molten metal is over here the inlet nozzle is here so the plunger is over here so you can see that the metal is being put inside under pressure here it enters into this and the casting you get like this so this is our uh, hot chamber pressure die casting technique similarly this is the cold chamber die casting technique i'll just go a little bit faster so you can see this here there is an injection unit this is the beginning of the cycle so this is the ladle ladle metal is being poured inside and then there will be a ram the ram will plunge that metal or put that metal inside the mold cavity and you get the final casting like this so this is an example or cold pressure die casting process so i'll stop down over here and then we'll continue one more video which is there for uh, centrifugal casting we'll see it in the next class and then we'll see the melting furnaces which is used for the casting processes in the next class again thank you